you would have seen in my last video that I got all of this gear from Ryko and today we're going to try and put it on the Land Cruiser. So I guess the first thing we've got to do is get this old catch can out of here and send it back off to Ryko. Well, we got rid of my custom bracket, the catch can, all the hoses and all that kind of stuff. I've also taken off the factory bracket where the ECU harness clips to because in these instructions here, that's what it tells me to do to get started with the installation of the Ryko kit. Alrighty, well I've got the old catch can out and I'm about to put the new one in, so let's compare them, shall we? So let's have a look at the RCC350 and the RCC351 by Ryko. Uh, these are the tops, I've just taken the tops off um, and let's have a look at those first and then we'll compare the bottom section. So here we go. This is the RCC350 and you can see that the outlet is in the same spot, but interestingly enough, let's go to the torch, down inside there is a much smaller sort of baffly cup type looking thing than what is in the 351. Now, the other thing to note, of course, is that, just grab these, all of this stuff here, these two springs and oh, that big seal and this plastic o-ring type thing was all um, at the top of this as well. In my opinion that is potentially what has caused the problem for myself and other people. Maybe I'm wrong I'm not an automotive engineer, but that's that's my opinion anyway. Um, interestingly enough, that seems to be it for the changes. There must be some other change in this top hat here because you can see I've had to put a gasket maker on there to glue that on so that it didn't leak. Whereas this one, must have some kind of glue or seal or something because these were stopping it from leaking originally. Anywho, um, 
the bottom section of both cans is identical. This would appear to be the pressure release. Let me get the torch again. The pressure release valve here, which would appear to go to atmosphere. And interestingly enough, people are saying that ProVent changed that for emissions regulations and dump it somehow into there, which I don't understand how dumping your pressure release into your drain would release any pressure, but something along those lines. But here we go, that's the pressure release there. And the other one's in the car at the moment, but it is exactly the same. So let's go and have a look here. Pull the filter out, have a look inside. There's the valve there. And there doesn't appear to be any noticeable differences in that bottom casing. What we do notice though, come over here, is that the two filters are different. So this is the bottom of the RCC351 filter and it has that baffle there in the bottom. And this is the RCC350 filter that was in there. And you can see it's got a bit of oil in it. Um, yeah, so I don't know what the baffle's for. Leave a comment below if you think you know, because I can't understand why you would need that. Because the only thing down there is the oil drain. Anyhow, let's get back to uh, finishing this off, shall we? So it's all in and it's looking pretty good. The bracket was really, really easy to fit. Um, two 10 mils and two 12 mils and, and away she went. Um, getting the 10 mils back on once the bracket was in was a little bit fiddly, but having one of those little uh, angled ratchet 10 mil spanners really did uh, make, make the difference there. I really like how the fuel filter only has one additional hose and it's a very short hose. It's a lot less things to go wrong and it's also a lot less 
uh, extra load on the fuel pumps. The catch can on the other hand was not quite as neat a fit and I'm still not 100% on that. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's first have a look at the fuel filter and you can see it sits right next to the genuine filter, which is right there. And the factory hose actually connects to that inlet port there. And the outlet hose is just this really short one that just goes around here like that. Very cool. It looks like it would be difficult to get to, but these hoses are easy to pop off and you would just undo these two 12 mils here and that whole um, filter would just come out, making that really easy to change. It's a very similar concept to the factory one, except you don't have all of these um, plugs and things you need to disconnect in order to do this one, because obviously there's no alarms on the Ryko one. So that's really good. These 10 mil bolts, I don't know if we can see them. You can see one of them just there on the firewall. Those are the two 10 mil bolts that hold the bracket for the ECU loom. And the ECU loom actually cable ties neatly up under the bracket just there. You can see this, my hand comes out of the way. You can see there's two holes there where that cable tie just wraps around the ECU loom instead of where that bracket was. So that's a really nice fit. And the catch can just slides on and uh, it just sits there with gravity basically, but I don't think it's gonna come off. Uh, but that makes it easy if you need to pull the catch can out to empty it, but I've hooked up the drain hose uh, down the bottom, so I don't need to worry about that. A Couple of things with the catch can. Just like the um, RCC350, they have these, um, like security screws, um, four of them all the way around that you have to remove in order to inspect it or change the filter. Um, I don't understand why they've made that so difficult. I, I believe with the ProVent you just unscrew the top and I don't know why you wouldn't do that or at least put, you know, normal hex heads or Phillips screws in there. Anyhow, these hoses, um, the hose clamps were they're very, very tight. They're only, only just at maximum, um, you know, opening the maximum amount do they actually fit over. And even then it's a bit of a challenge. I don't know whether they have to be that way or whether they're just a size too small. But what I don't like is a couple of things. One, it's getting very, very busy down here now with all these fuel lines. And you can see that the hose is just touching from the catch can there onto the diesel line. Now, the issue that I have with that is that these are connected to the engine and this is connected to the body. So this is gonna be moving constantly and it's gonna cause potential wear in here. So I might need to cable tie this out of the way but then you need to be able to get to both of these for servicing so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that I did actually put a cable tie on there initially and then I had to do something with this catch can so I had to take it off anyway um, the other thing is I've got the same issue with the aircon line down under here and so I have put some cable ties around here because this doesn't need to come off um, so that they don't rub but these are both connected to the engine, so they should be less rubbing, except on maybe corrugations. But the other thing is, you can see in here that it's actually sort of almost got a little bit of a kink in it. It's quite, it's almost like these hoses are too long. So, I don't know, what do you guys reckon? I'm thinking I should just trim a little bit off both of these ends here, just to relieve a bit of pressure on this bend. Leave a comment below, let me know if you think that's something that I should do. Um, these also touch, which is probably not a huge issue, but eventually you would think that they could potentially rub as well. So I'm wondering if I put a cable tie around there as well, but you need to still be able to make sure you can get these off so I can change the filter out, because this one needs to come off to take the top section off the catch can itself. So this cut here, I 
had this put in when I had the other um, RCC 350 catch can in and the big red tubes that you had seen in a different video. I wonder if that would get in the way if you hadn't trimmed that around. So that might be something you might want to think about doing if you're going to install one of these. I, obviously you wouldn't have to because it doesn't say anything about it in the instructions, but it does make it a little bit easier. I guess a little bit clearer. I mean, you have this off, it's only two 10 mil bolts anyway. You have that off when you uh, install it, but anyway, so there you go. It's all fit up really neat. I like the fact the two fuel filters are right next to each other. That's in a really good spot. It's really solid even though it's just sort of sitting in there. Um, it can't really come out because it's just gonna hit up there. Um, it's just these hoses potentially rubbing. That's my biggest concern. Let us know what you reckon. It all looks okay. I mean, I'm assuming these Ryko filters are right, but at least I've got the, the factory one after it. So um, it's a 15 micron I read actually, which is probably a bit smaller than I think what's recommended for a secondary filter. But I guess that's probably, I'm assuming the factory one's five. I guess we'll find out in time. Seems to be running okay. Haven't done a huge amount with it, but um, it took me, oh man, it took me forever to prime this bugger up once I'd put the extra filter in, but I guess that's diesel life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, think about subscribing, hit that like button or comment below. It all helps me out. I'll catch you next time.